Okay, welcome to video number 22 of the Diaries of a Coronavirologist YouTube channel. Today is the 14th of May and we are up to about 4.4 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 around the world. And we've crossed the marker of uh, uh, 300,000 confirmed deaths. So in my last video, I started doing a bit of Q&A to do quick answers to some of the questions that are being put in the comments to my videos. And one of those was regarding the vaccine candidate that's being trialled in the UK, largely centred out of Oxford. And this is something I'm quite happy talking about because I grew up in Oxfordshire, so very close to the city of Oxford. And I've wanted to do a broader video on this for a little while. So yesterday I did a very quick answer about it, but today I want to go into more detail and talk about the vaccine candidate and how it's been designed to elicit antibodies that could be protective against SARS-2, why it's got a bit of a head start against some of the other candidates and some of the promising interest uh, early data that's being released from animal studies, and also talk about just how the trial is all being set up, because this is looking like a promising vaccine candidate and one that I think is good to know about. So that's what we're talking about today. So the vaccine is called Chad Ox. So to break this, each, to break this down, that is CH for chimp, AD for adenovirus, and OX for Oxford. Hopefully the Oxford bit is self-explanatory. It's being largely centred out of Oxford and it's been largely done and developed at the University of Oxford. But to talk a bit more about the other aspects. So adenoviruses uh, are another group of viruses. So in the way coronaviruses encompass lots of different viruses, so SARS-1, SARS-2, MERS, 229E, OC43, so on and so forth, that infect humans and animals. Adenoviruses are another group of viruses that also infect humans and animals. Although there's a, there's a few big differences between them, not least that adenoviruses are DNA viruses, whereas coronaviruses are RNA viruses, so they carry their genetic material slightly differently. So adenoviruses have been looked at for a while in terms of them being potential gene therapy agents. So their, their DNA, their genome, sorry, is carried in DNA. And it's possible to take out various large chunks of the adenovirus DNA and replace it with something that's being eyed up for gene therapy. So let's say that I have a mutation in one gene and I therefore don't produce the protein and that causes a disease. The idea behind adenovirus-based gene therapy is that you could make viruses that carry that gene I'm missing and then infect me with that virus, and then I would produce that protein that I'm missing. The way a virus works is to go in and infect cells and make more of its own proteins, but we can replace the proteins it makes. It doesn't know what it's making, it just has the instructions, and we can add in our own instructions. So that's the, the idea behind adenovirus-based gene therapy. Now, the vaccine is designed in essentially the same way, except instead of replacing a gene that might be mutated, we're putting in the gene to produce the spike protein of SARS-2. So as a reminder, the spike protein is the bit that sits on the outside. When you see those pictures of SARS, coronavirus, you've always got the spikes. That's called spike. And it's the bit the immune system sees and mounts an antibody response against. So the aim of any vaccine is to make the body produce antibodies that would target spike without the body encountering the full virus and therefore getting COVID-19. So the SARS-2 vaccine, the Chadox vaccine for SARS-2, has been engineered to have the spike DNA sequence for SARS-2, such that when this adenovirus is injected into people, that virus can go in and infect cells, and then it has the genetic instructions to produce spike. So those cells will produce spike, and that will trigger the immune response. So this is very similar to the vaccine I talked about on a previous video that I think was video number 16, uh, 15, sorry, which was the Moderna vaccine. So that was an RNA-based vaccine. So there, RNA goes into the cells, and it produces the spike protein. This is taking one step back. So DNA makes RNA, makes protein. So it's the same principle, largely, just using a different delivery method. Now, when you're using a virus to get the DNA into a cell, there can be complications of the immune system attacking that virus. 
And this is something that was found with gene therapy based adenoviruses. So if you use a human adenovirus to deliver gene therapy, or in this example, to deliver a vaccine candidate, there's certain people who may have been infected with that human adenovirus and therefore have antibodies which target your attempted vaccine or gene therapy. So therefore, it's not going to work as effectively. And that's why it's a chimp adenovirus. So very few people have come into contact with chimp adenoviruses. So this is a way to avoid any potential pre-existing immunity to the adenovirus so that your vaccine platform, your vehicle for producing the vaccine candidate, can get into the cells and produce spike so that you produce the immune response. Now, this vaccine has gotten through, seemingly gone through phases of clinical trials very fast. The first stage was already considered a phase one slash two clinical trial, recruiting a thousand volunteers, which I believe that they filled very quickly. And I think they've filled that thousand. And they're already talking about moving to a phase two slash three trial of 5,000 people. And the reason they've been able to do this is because they've already had this platform in place for various other viruses. So most relevant to this, they'd already done clinical trials for a vaccine expressing the MERS spike. So in the way I'm saying that we can engineer these adenoviruses to produce the SARS-2 spike to trigger an immune response, you can just take that DNA sequence out and you can have a different one. So the group already had a MERS-based vaccine. So they took out their MERS spike sequence and put in their SARS-2 spike sequence as soon as the DNA sequence for the SARS-2 SARS-2 genome was released and they'd already trialed that in people to find it was safe and actually did stimulate an immune response. Unfortunately that vaccine isn't licensed because there's just not enough cases of MERS to yet know if it worked but they already knew it was safe so this allows this vaccine to be much further along in the clinical trials to some of the other ones because we already have good data that it's safe. So importantly this system is considered a non-replicating adenovirus. So generally, the point of a virus is it goes into a cell, it's got all of the instructions to produce more copies of itself, and then all of those new copies go off and infect more cells and spread, and that's how disease is caused and how viruses live their life cycles. But in this adenovirus, it's non-replicating. So for this virus, it goes into a cell and it carries instructions to make spike, but it can't produce any more virus particles. So it terminates there at that one cell. And this is because there's been a deletion in the adenovirus genome of a gene called E1. So this engineered genome that's being used has the instructions to make spike, has various other important genes for the adenovirus life cycle to allow the production of spike, and it doesn't have E1. So no new particles can be made. Now, why this is good is because you don't want rampant replication of this chimp adenovirus, which could potentially have unknown effects. You only really want it to act as a delivery system to get the instructions to make spike into the cells, but to then not do anything else. Now, some of you may be thinking, if it lacks the ability to make more virus particles, how do you make the virus particles in the first place that are being used in the vaccine? So in the lab, it's possible to produce cells that can themselves produce the E1 protein. So viruses can are kind of like Legos. You've got various different building blocks that allow you to make up a virus particle. So this virus is missing one type of brick, a green brick, let's say. So you can put all the instruction or you can put all the bricks into the cell that gives the green brick that allows you to produce virus particles. But then when they go off and infect new cells, they, are la- they can't make any more of the green brick, but they can make all the other bricks. They, all the other building blocks are there. So this is just a way to keep this safe and to stop any aberrant replication of the adenovirus, which potentially could itself cause disease. So while it's been shown that their, their MERS spike-based vaccine was potentially promising, it produced a good antibody response and it, got, it was safe, We still need to test these things for the SARS-2-based vaccine. And a paper I saw today on BioArchive that was published yesterday is really promising for this because they found that it was immunogenic and protective in animal models. So they vaccinated mice with the Chadox SARS-2 spike uh, vaccine 
and found that those mice produced antibodies against SARS-2. They then also worked with rhesus macaques. So these are monkeys and they're a very good model system for humans. They're very similar to us humans. When they, when they vaccinated the macaques with their Ch the Chadox SARS-2 spike vaccine, they found it didn't cause any adverse effects and it protected those monkeys when they were challenged with SARS-2. So those monkeys develop a pneumonia-like disease similar to humans when they get COVID-19 and the vaccine protected those monkeys. Those monkeys produced antibodies and didn't develop severe disease. So this is really exciting. This vaccine platform we know is safe. This chimpadenovirus is safe. And it looks like it's working in animal models and it's already being used in humans. So we're already getting a good sense of whether it's safe and whether it's producing antibodies in humans. So this is very exciting. So I've referenced the trial a couple of times, but just to round out the video by going into a little bit more detail, this phase one slash two trial that's been initiated and has enrolled the thousand or 1100 people into it. This has been set up as a randomized, blinded, multi-center, placebo-controlled trial. So it's got all the right things. And they've got a really good placebo, in my opinion. So instead of just doing a saline injection to mimic giving a vaccine, they're actually using an already licensed vaccine. So they're using a vaccine that's used, uh, a meningococcal vaccine, that's routinely given to teenagers in the UK. So this is going to also trigger an immune response and any kind of adverse events like having a bit of a rash or an itch or a sore arm or those kind of things, that's going to be simulated in their placebo. So it's a really good way to compare whether their SARS-2 vaccine is effective. So in the trial, people who get the vaccines are going to be followed up with, they're going to uh, be checked for anything more severe than you know the sore arm and those kind of things. They're going to have blood drawn to see whether they're producing antibodies against the SARS-2 spike protein. And because it's blinded and it's controlled with a placebo, they can start to develop some data about whether it's protective. And then because they've also got this phase two slash three trial in the works, which is recruiting another 5,000 people that's set up largely the same way, just with more, we're really going to start to get a sense of whether the vaccine is protective. Sadly, this virus is still spreading rapidly, but that does mean we can really get a sense of whether the people that are getting the vaccine are developing less instances of COVID-19 versus the people who get the meningococcal vaccine. So this is really promising and really exciting. We know the platform's safe from some of the previous studies that have been done using the same system. It's been shown to be immunogenic in mice and monkeys and the rhesus macaque are probably our closest, uh, our best model in lieu of humans. So it looks like it's working and there's already a reasonably powered trial underway. So this is exciting. And moreover, the group behind it all think that if they get good results and they get authorization, they would be able to produce a million doses by September. And obviously a million is way short of where we need to be to vaccinate all the people we need to vaccinate. But to be able to ramp up and produce those vaccines, this is where we need to be going. So everything's pointing in the right direction. And I think it's going to be really exciting to follow this one. And that's where I'll end it for the night. So hopefully quite a positive video today in terms of I think this vaccine candidate is looking very promising. As are various other candidates that are being looked at, which is also great because the more options we have, the better equipped we're going to be to deal with this. Let's say there's a limit of each company can only produce a billion vaccines. If we get seven or eight companies, then that's everyone covered in one way or another. So the more options we have, the better. And I just wanted to highlight this one because it's quite a long way through its uh, clinical trials. So there's no questions to this video. I brought into my video, that, uh, for my last video, the idea of doing Q&A. And I do think I might keep playing around with that for a few videos. But I only posted that video this morning and YouTube was down when I started recording this video. So I wasn't able to look if anyone was asking any questions. Um, hopefully on my next video, I'll have some. So if you're finding these videos useful, please keep leaving feedback, leave comments and ask questions. So I've got things to talk about in the question section. Put likes on the video for the YouTube metrics and please keep sharing and keep subscribing so that you get the updates for new videos when I post them because I can be a little erratic on it. 
Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. Please stay safe, wash your hands and keep calm and carry on. We will get through this.